In this video, we will talk about 1976 half dollars worth money, the bicentennial coins you definitely should be looking for, and some recent sales that happened for the first time. It's hard to believe that after so many years, in this case 46 years, that there are still new discoveries being made on coins. How much money do you really have in your pocket? A $204,000 penny found by a teenager. A $10,000 coin found in a Cheerios box. And an $18,000 penny found by one of our viewers. Got coins? JB Coins Inc. on YouTube. Daily videos and free giveaways. Join us today. Hey YouTubers, this is J&B from JB Coins Inc. This video is about bicentennial half dollars worth money, and we will cover a lot about them. If you like this topic or any topic related to coins and currency, please consider subscribing. Also, thank you for liking and sharing our videos. It helps our small channel a lot. Now, going back to our video, most of us know that the bicentennial half dollars were struck in 1975 and 1976, to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. But you won't find a coin with a 1975 date on it. Because all bicentennial coins, not only half dollars, but also the quarters and the Ike dollars, will show the date on the obverse as 1776 to 1976. Now the dime, nickel, and penny will have 1975 on them if they were made that year. The reverse of the half dollar features a symmetrical front view of Independence Hall in Philadelphia. It was built in 1753 and served as the meeting place of the Second Continental Congress and the Constitutional Convention. Both the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution were signed there. Besides bicentennial half dollars, the U.S. Mint struck bicentennial quarters and dollar coins. But not everyone knows that the bicentennial Kennedy dollar was the first of the three coins to be issued. At a ceremony in Huntington's hometown of Minneapolis, held on July 7, 1975, since he designed the half dollar. The bicentennial Kennedy half dollars were struck in Philadelphia, Denver, and the San Francisco mints. In business and proof strike and in silver and clad composition, they were sold in different sets as well as regular strike half dollars that were released into circulation. Today we hardly see bicentennial half dollars in our change, but you can possibly order them from your bank or buy them on the secondary market. The minage of bicentennial coins is huge. But don't forget, they were minted for two years, yet it is a short series and therefore they are very collectible. The Philadelphia and Denver Mint struck half dollars only in regular finish for business use in a clad composition. The clad half dollar should weigh 11.30 grams. The Philadelphia half dollar won't bear any mint mark. The Denver mint will bear a D mint mark. The values of P&D bicentennial half dollars are very similar. In not a really high mint state grade like MS65, they're worth around 50 bucks. It's not bad money for a 50 cent coin, just remember that grading costs money. So always calculate your cost before sending your coin out to be graded. And always read the information and rules. Different grading companies have different requirements. We have videos about grading coins as well as links to four major grading companies on our website, jbcoinsinc.com, should you be interested. Now, the best grade known for the P&D Bicentennial Half Dollar is MS67 Plus, and both are worth on average about $3,000. This 1976 D. Kennedy half is the latest sale, and in grade MS67 Plus, it sold for, at Heritage Auctions for $2,585. MS67 Plus grade is a high grade, but it's not the best. The best would be MS70 but it's still a very nice grade. To find coins in that good condition, you most likely need to look at the uncirculated mint sets 
from 1975 or 1976. And as we mentioned, you can buy them on the secondary market or even during our live auctions. Now, the situation looks different and much more interesting in our opinion with Bicentennial Kennedy half dollars struck at the San Francisco Mint. Like we mentioned at the beginning, the San Francisco Mint struck half dollars in silver and clad composition and in regular and proof finish. The San Francisco Mint also struck two well-known varieties on Bicentennial half dollars, but we will cover that later. All of them will bear an S mint mark. If you've watched our videos for some time, you should know that proof coins are usually not worth a lot of money, a few bucks at best, and that the San Francisco Mint usually mints their coins in a very good condition, like proof 69 or 70. However, the bicentennial proof coins are an exception and are worth nice money. So let's start with the 76S proof half in clad composition. This coin will have a shiny finish and being a clad coin should weigh 11.30 grams. These coins were sold in 1975 and 1976 proof sets. In the best condition, proof 70, this coin, which is the latest sale, sold at Heritage Auctions in August of 2022 for $264. It's very nice money for this proof coin. Now, let's look at the silver proof half dollar now. This coin should weigh 11.50 grams. And the latest sale happened at David Lawrence in August of 2022. And this proof 70 silver bicentennial half dollar sold for $350. To find this coin, you will need to search silver proof sets, as you can see in this picture. The last version of the bicentennial half dollar struck at the San Francisco Mint was the regular non-proof finish silver coin. This coin was sold originally in the uncirculated three coin silver set. And here comes the big news. The highest grade known for this coin is MS69 and only three coins exist in that grade. None of them ever got sold until now. This is the first bicentennial silver uncirculated Kennedy half dollar in grade MS69 that recently sold at Heritage Auctions and it sold for great money. How great? How about $9,600 great? Wow, almost 10 grand for a Kennedy half dollar. How cool is that? Also, like we mentioned, the well-known varieties on Bicentennial half dollars happened on the coins that came from the San Francisco Mint. The first one applies to the 1976 S Silver Kennedy half dollar regular strike. The variety is a DDO, designation FS101. What you're looking for is strong doubling on the words we trust. This picture illustrates that doubling. Because of the texture of the silver clad bicentennial halves, it makes this variety challenging to see. Magnification is necessary to be able to recognize this variety. This coin you see in this picture is graded MS66, a nice grade, but not a high grade. And it was sold at great collections for $704. So if you have the three coin uncirculated silver bicentennial sets, don't forget to check them for this variety. The next variety applies to the 1976S proof finish bicentennial half dollar and is known as DDR designation FS801. The strong doubling can be seen on E Pluribus Unum, the designer's initials, and most of the devices. This coin that you see in this picture is graded proof 67 DDR, not Cameo or Deep Cameo, and it's sold also at great collections for $1,100. Now, if this coin would have had a Cameo or Deep Cameo finish, the price of this coin would be significantly higher. But it's still a really nice profit for a clad coin that you can buy in a proof set. So what do you think? Do you have any Bicentennial half dollars? If you do, maybe you should look at them again. Now please let us know in the comment section below what are your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. Also, please watch our recent video about another very valuable Kennedy half dollar, 
linked in the upper corner of this one. We also would like to say thank you to all of our JB Coins Inc. members. And if you'd like to become a JB Coins Inc. family member, please follow the link below this video. We greatly appreciate it. So we hope you liked this video and found it helpful. And if you did, please like, share, and subscribe so we can create more videos for you. Also, please remember to hit the little bell and set it so you'll be notified whenever we upload a new video or do a live stream. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.